It's interesting times in rugby, so we're having to sort of move with the times. Um, we've got a, a pre-qualification event on Friday that we're really excited about. First time for a number of more junior teams in the local area to be able to get a chance to play in next year's sevens. The invitation teams for the Saturday, you know, look really strong and really exciting, and we're, we're, we're delighted to have our first ever women's event. It's not quite gone as smoothly as we'd like, but we've got uh, three strong teams coming playing on Saturday and uh, yeah we're really looking forward to seeing that as sort of our first formal women's event on Saturday. Teething problems tends to go with the territory not just here at Melrose but right across the Kings of the Sevens and uh, it's happened here as well um, but you've been able to adapt and I think the pre quali uh, tournament is a pools event now. It is yeah um, obviously there's been lots of issues with sort of fixture scheduling this year um, obviously now the Super Series has come in and is clashing with the event. So I think certain teams have got, uh, you know, str struggling for players this weekend. Air, um, you know, they, they managed to won win a cup game that perhaps unexpectedly. So, yeah, we, we just have to go with the flow. Um, you know, obviously we fully understand, you know, teams uh, have changing priorities. I think North Berwick. You know, they've got a chance to win their league, which, you know, when they were sort of confirmed that they were going to come, they maybe didn't expect to be having. So we just go go with the flow. I mean, it's still, a, you know, a fantastic group of teams that are coming to play here. And, uh, and the, the pool event on the Friday, you know, it's, it means these teams are getting a, a chance to settle in, play, you know, on this 3G facility, play in front of a decent crowd. And, you know, hopefully by the second game, they'll all feel pretty comfortable with it. Now I have to say the elephant in the room question, which I must ask you, is the uh, the fact that the Super Series is starting on the day of the Melrose Sevens. Now I can be sort of fairly critical. Obviously, uh, you're involved with the Southern Knights as well, so you you'll be more diplomatic than I. But uh, I think it's it's crazy. You yeah, know, I mean, I think none of us would at Melrose have wanted the clash. Um, in fact, we, 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 we requested specifically for the clash not to happen. You were we, outvoted though, I believe. I, I believe we were outvoted, yeah. I, it's not something I've sort of intimately involved in. I mean, obviously, I think going forward, we, we would ask the SIU to, to reconsider that, that approach. I think this is a unique event um, to Scotland. It, it's, a, it's a bit of a jewel in the crown for Scottish rugby. You know, we, we'd, we'd like all of the players and all of the teams to have an opportunity to come here and celebrate the home of Sevens Rugby. Um, this year, you know, we're not going to get everybody that perhaps we'd like. Um, you know, my own son will be, uh, will, will be away playing on the Saturday. You know, I can't get to go and see him. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure that's where we'd all want it to be. So hopefully uh, in future years we can avoid the clash. Ticket sales. Now, I believe the, the main stand is, is sold out, which is great news. Yep. Uh, a lot of people, of course, wait for the, the weather <laughs> forecast, yep. uh, which is looking very favourable, as we mentioned. Uh, but how are things going from your perspective? Yeah, look, it's, it's difficult to track tickets here traditionally. I mean, um, the ticketing system was a little antiquated when I got involved. So, um, I mean, we are tracking uh, where we were this time last year, and that was with a whole load of rollover tickets from 2020. So we're pretty pleased with the advanced ticket sales, as you say. All the seats effectively in the ground are, are sold. You know, I totally accept that a majority of people in the borders and perhaps even up, you know, Edinburgh and beyond look at the weather forecast. The trains are very favourable this year. ScotRail have thankfully put on extra trains coming down and going away after the event. So, you know, I think all of the um, signs are there for people to have a great Saturday down here at the Mara Sevens, and that's what we hope they'll do but you know at the end of the day you know we, we're in the world where there's an awful lot of other things that we're, we're you know people have got to distract them uh, but you know so I think the weather is a big big factor for people and and the forecast looks fantastic so we're, we're really pleased with that and on the pitch it couldn't be better could it you've got the British Army who will be defending their titles yep. samurai possibly stronger than last year uh, which is going to be interesting um, but of course we were talking this time last year about the co miss and samurai and discounting a lot of the others but in fact the army came through they'd prepared really well for it they had a lot of time in camp um, do you see any other teams coming under the radar to, to challenge those two I, I, I think sevens rugby's it, it's a great spectacle because you're never quite sure what's going to happen and it's such a, a fast and 
quick game that you know you only need one or two surprise players who are just in form and away and away a team will go so I think some of the invitational teams will be will be strong. I think some of the teams that people don't know much around, people like the stunts and the Lions, they, they are strong teams. And I think, you know, the, the quality of rugby on Saturday will be very good. I'm actually also expecting some of the uh, some of the Scottish teams to be to be strong. I'm I'm led to believe Jedburgh will will put in a pretty good performance and we're we're really looking forward to see how they go. I know Melrose are always keen to perform at this game. We had some of our uh, some of our players resting last weekend <laughs> to make sure they're ready for this weekend. So um you know my view's always simple. I know a lot of people have different views on this, but my view is our job is to put on the best rugby we can on the green yards to make it the most entertaining uh, rugby that we can and I think we achieved that last year with some really high quality rugby certainly from the quarterfinals onwards and I, I expect it to be actually from the first round this year some really good rugby. I think there's some great you know board of East City clashes in the first rounds and you know that, that's the interesting thing is when you talk to the players the players just want to play the best rugby they can against the best teams they can. They're not here going, can you protect Melrose and make sure we get a good run to the to the semis and the, the finals. They're just going, Phil, you know, give us the best teams. We just want to play against the best players. Samurai have got an ex-England international playing for them. We know the army are full of Fijians that have been in camp and... Uh, it, it, there's some good, good quality. If you're going to win the Mauro Sevens, you need to be a good team. And a fantastic place to showcase your talents. I think that this ground's iconic, isn't it? This town's iconic. It's incredible. You know, obviously, I'm not from around here. You know, when people know you from Melrose, the first thing they say is, that, you know, they're Melrose Sevens. It's what the town is largely known for. And, you know, I think our job is to ensure that an event that's been here for 140 years continues to be here, you know, long long after we've all gone, you know, and that, that's what we're trying to achieve. Now, of course, uh, on social media, everyone has their own little comments and stuff to make, and that, that's absolutely fair enough. That's what social media is all about. Um, one of the comments which keeps coming up, and um, I know you can answer it very, very simply for everybody, uh, and that is, why is Melrose never in the preliminary? And it's quite simply because they're the host team. Yeah, the host team gets seen. So, you know, um, I think most of the Kings of the Sevens do the same, is my understanding. But certainly, you know, since I've been involved, the, the tradition here, and there's plenty of tradition to adhere to, is um, that Melrose are seeded. And, and so, that yeah, they're just seeded in that, as, and, as one of the seeded sides. Doddy Weir, a fantastic man. He was here this time last year, sadly no longer. But he will be remembered at this one. Yeah, look, it's... Um, I think it's time to celebrate Doddy from Melrose's perspective, and, and certainly that's what we're trying to do, you know, this weekend. Uh, clearly, the, the charity, the fundraising that we do at, at every sevens this year, that that fundraising will go to the My Name's Doddy Foundation. Um, we've got quite a lot of activity where Doddy's tartan will be will be prevalent. We'll be celebrating Doddy just at, you know before the final. We've got. Uh, some sheep Sheep. coming here uh, (laughs) from the Royal Highland Society. Um, So, yeah, there's a Doddy sheep. We've got Ua Doddy coming, uh, who normally uh, is up at Murrayfield. Uh, There's all sorts of activity, um, you know, celebrating Doddy. And, I, I, you know, I, we all kind of had an attachment, know him personally, know his kids, know, know Cathy. And I think all we want to do is just, you know, recognise what a, what an amazing contribution he made. Um, you know, not just, you know, as a rugby player, but in that, the latter part of his life, it's just incredible what he achieved. Now, organising an event like the Melrose Sevens, not the easiest thing in the world, I would imagine, because there's people who are very (laughs) very traditional, there are people who want the thing to move forward, Uh, there's the commercial aspects of it as well. How do you get that balance right? Look, I I think it's about common sense. I mean, you know, everything we do is building on what people did before us, and we're, we're very cognizant of that. You know, we don't want to trample on traditions in any way that's unnecessary, but at the same time, rugby is evolving and evolving at a hell of a pace and we have to evolve with it to ensure that the the event is relevant you know in years to come so it's it's about striking a balance where you know my 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 sort of principle is very simple put on the best rugby on the field that you can and ensure that what is people are largely here for you know and i know 
people have got lots of other entertainment around the event, but ultimately when they turn their head and look at what's going on on the field, it needs to be entertaining, it needs to be competitive, and it needs to be as high quality as we can, uh, we can get it. And we're, you know, we're in, fortunate to have an incredible facility now, we're in, fortunate to have you know, an iconic venue for people to, to come to. And I think that all these factors are, they make for a pretty unique event. And, you know, we, we have to keep moving it forward. You know, as I said earlier, Saturday morning, you know, I appreciate people of my age and perhaps your age, Stuart, you know, we're, we're, we're very keen to understand what's going on with the rugby. But if you're 16 years old, there's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of other things you you're doing with your time and we've got to make sure that they're interested in what's going on here at the sevens as well one more question it's one i ask all the time and i shall ask it again this year because there's a lot of interest in it and i know scott white uh, committed himself uh, last year to saying that the world series would come to melrose by 2026 we're three years away are we closer to that event happening at a formal level no um i think there are there are lots of things going on in the background that have yet to um, come to fruition that we could talk about publicly. Um, you know, so there are definitely efforts to ensure that there is, a, you know, another event here at Melrose using this facility. But, you know, these things are not easily achieved. I think everybody's still coming out of COVID. Finance is getting more expensive. But the reality is, I think as rugby evolves, seven is is also evolving and I think there, there's undoubtedly an opportunity for Melrose to play a significant part in sevens going forward. Well it's always good to talk to you Phil, always honest and giving us straight answers and we wish you all the best for the weekend. Thanks Stuart, look forward to, uh, look forward to seeing you on Saturday evening.